Well, you probably remember how Hoosiers knitted scarves for volunteers during the 2012 Super Bowl here in Indy. What you may not know is that some of the knitting was done by men in prison. Scott Swan is here now with a look at how that activity helped change those offenders after their release. Scott? Yeah, John, some of those guys I met several years ago are still inside the prison walls, but others have served their time, and they're now out rebuilding their lives, carrying with them a talent they learned behind bars and rekindling a special friendship with the person who taught them a lot more than knitting. Down the street from the Woodruff Place neighborhood in Indianapolis is a minimum security prison. Inmates are serving time for attempted murder, cocaine possession, and DUIs. But inside these walls, you got two sticks like this. Lives are changing, one stitch at a time. You just take this needle and put it under. In 2012, we showed you inmates knitting scarves for the Super Bowl. Well, I've only got this far so far. <laughs> the woman behind the Naptown Knitters was a volunteer who lived in the neighborhood near the prison. Miss Tattenall's an awesome lady. She's Doreen is a grandma who's got a passion for prisoners. They know grandma goes to prison. She's affectionately known as Gangsta Mama. It fits, I guess. I didn't think I was a Gangsta Mama, but I guess I am. I'll take it. It turns out the effort behind bars did more than generate hundreds of scarves and hats. We stay together, we follow each other on Facebook. Welcome to the Naptown Knitters reunion. <laughs> the guys, now released from prison, still get together every year for food, conversation. You, you can forget, but it comes back. And knitting. I'm working on this purple scarf. It's a chance for them to remember how they initially struggled with the craft. It was a disaster looking for a place to happen. Their knitting has come a long way. And so have they. Uh, my name is David Griffin, and I was incarcerated for a burglary. David Griffin says his life is radically different. Come a very long way. Because of Gangsta Mama. And came in with a kind, giving heart. And I saw that and I said, I want what she's got. I want that. I While he doesn't knit very much anymore, Griffin now sees the true benefit of the Naptown Knitters. It wasn't really about the knitting. It was more afterwards, looking back, I realized that the real lesson is about unconditional love and giving. That's exactly what Gangsta Mama envisioned. Instead of yarn, we're weaving our lives together and our trust and um, love. It's true love. Every time I left the facility, I hugged those guys and I said, I love you. <laughs> An unlikely bond between a grandma and prison inmates woven together with yarn and knitting needles. You gave me something to reach for, something to believe in, and I thank you for that. Let me know when you get home. All right. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Special lady really cares about those guys. Those Naptown knitters get together once a year. The yarn and knitting needles are still there, but it's a very small part of their lives because their lives right now and their friendship, that's what's been knitted together. Yeah, my grandmother used to say it to me too. Mm. Call me when you get home. <laughs> so so right. are all of these guys who knitted uh, out of prison now? Not all of them, John. I mean, some are still serving their sentences. Others got out reoffended and they're now back behind bars mm. but what they found is this group is a way to keep each other accountable the guys I interviewed have jobs they've got families and they've got something new they've got hope you know and I still have my scarf from the Super Bowl you're so you're a volunteer back then maybe one of those guys <laughs> <knitted>. <laughs> that's right good point I'm gonna I'm gonna think that way nice anyway. all right that's good great story thank you Scott you bet.